Alright, you old folks, it's another nob the day, a nob the day. Well, what can I tell you about the day? What can I tell you? <sighs> I'm getting a bit pissed off actually, the nob the days. I'm beginning to wonder if anyone appreciates me in the universe, Ken. Because I came, my wife doesn't appreciate me. My boy appreciates me. He always tells me he loves me, Ken. Usually he stopped me hitting him right enough, but... I didn't hit him, I just threatened to hit him, to shut him up now and again, you can. But, eh, my boy drives me nuts. My wife, you can, I've discovered who I am. I have discovered who I am, ladies and gentlemen. And it's no really very pretty. Have you ever seen the film Abigail's Party? Mike Lee. I love Mike Lee. Come on, hey. That man should get knighthood. I don't believe in knighthoods and all the rest of it, but he is the best filmmaker ever, bar none, by miles. You've got to say that. Have you ever watched any of his films? They are true humanity put in their films. You know, that's the all... That's their all, like... He didn't get any character caricatures in his films, you know? There's no like one dimensional characters in his films because human beings are all full of these complexities, aren't we? I mean I can slag slag my wife to death, I can complain about things, I can be an arsehole, but I can also be quite loving and gentle and kind, you know? All in the space of five minutes. Cause that's what being human's all about. You watch a Mike Lethal and oh every one of them just resonates with you because he shows real people in all their madness, you know. So, if you watch the film Abigail's Party, you kind of character Tony, right? Tony. Now, Tony, he's like one miserable son of a bitch because he used to be a football player in this film. Well, actually, yeah, that's his character. He used to be a football player. Apparently, the actor in real life. He had the same kind of experience. He was a football player and his career got cut short by injury. And then he got married to this woman, right? Loose, loose phrase. <laughs> this woman in this thing. And he's been married three years and he's just bought a house and he's really he's settled in for a life of eternity with this bird who he can't escape for, right? And he, every time the, the woman, his wife, or I think it's his wife, I'm not sure it was just partners or they're actually married, I think they're married, but every time she opens her gub, right, the camera goes to his face and he looks at her like, yeah, fuck I, okay, he's got this pure, fuck, what have I done look on my face, Ken, okay? pure disdain, because that's, that's, that's what I'm going through right now with my wife, right, and it's purely my fault, it's purely me, there's no her out there, Ken, okay? Well, I don't know, she's just being herself, and I'm judging her for being herself in, in a, such a way where I judge everything she says as being the, the it's like everything she says is the completely, the, the, the worst thing she could possibly say to me in that moment, and it just pisses me off immensely, and I just want her to fucking die, basically. Okay, I'm not holding anything back, you're giving it to you straight, I want her to fucking die. And give me peace and give me out of this fucking torture that I've kind of, I'm stuck in. It's like a jail. I'm stuck in a jail here. I can't escape. And I look at her every, every time she says anything, anything at all. It's like, just the very fact that she's moving her mouth, that's enough to make me look at her like Tony. He looks at the, his wife and Abigail's party like, why the fuck did you say that? Are you fucking stupid? No. I'll no be fucking dead. Hey, for instance, today, right? Our brother came. He's here for Australia. Right? Now, he's not an Australian, but he's a Muslim and he's back in here with his Australian partner, okay? Right? Now, they were going to the hospital. He's taking her, instead of Dede taking her to the hospital, he's taking her to the hospital in Dede's car. Now, instead of... No, I just said that. Basically, they were driving past the post office and I had an internet fucking bill to pay and it's going to cost 50 quid. And I says, well, you're driving past the post office, why can't you pay it? She's like, oh, I can't walk, I can't walk. It's like, aye, but your brother 
can walk, can he? And here's the guy, help you, help you. So he's like, no, no, I don't know how to direct him to the post office. I've already told her this, it's along the end of the road. You turn right, you go along, around the boot, back along the same road again. You'll find the post office. You can't where the post office is. It's a matter of fucking going two minutes out your way. No, no, she says to me, you need to exercise. Oh dear, fucking really. You get on your bike and you pay it. Oh, you're right. I do need to exercise because I'm sitting in front of this computer and I'm drinking lots of beer, right? And my belly is getting pretty big because I'm eating lots of chocolate because I've got no life whatsoever. I'm eating crappy food. This GMO food that's got fats in it, all this candy and chocolate that we eat, it's got fats in it we can't dissolve, right? And that's why we're all getting fat and this beer's no good for you either. But it's only way I can get through my day by giving myself hits all the time with this fucking some kind of sugar or candy and beer. I'm on a bit of a beer phase these days, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes I can go like four weeks without it, and then I have to have five days just get as much beer through my neck, otherwise I'll explode. So she says to me, oh you go pay, you go on your bike and you pay. And that she goes, I just say, get the fucking this, get out of this, get out of this, I don't want to fucking see you. And her brother actually seen me in the mirror, he was already out of this, and I kind of hid behind the door, but I was saying, like, fuck off, just get that fuck. I'm trying to play it, keeping the family, other family members come. You try and play, it's like happy families, isn't it? Oh, we're in love, I, I, true, it's a real thing. Honestly, your relationship's perfect. You can't part of why I come on here and talk to you is like this, right? It's because everyone is like this these days, you can Everyone, when you meet other people, other partners, you say, Oh, look at them, they look happy and in love. I wonder what's wrong with us. Why are we no fucking so ecstatically happily married? You can. But everyone feels like you want to kill the other person. And really, when it comes down to it, it's because you're unhappy in yourself, isn't it? It's really, we've got these things burning about our head that... It's like, I want to do this, I've got no freedom here, I want to go and do, do that, I want to do this, but I can't. I've got, we're stuck together financially, and we're stuck together for a whole loads of other reasons, and it's like I'm, I'm caught in a trap in a straitjacket. And I don't know if you feel like this in your marriage or your life situation, you can. But living right now is no easy, is it? It's fucking murder. In this world that we've created, we're all plummeting along the same road, to oblivion and nobody stops to question it. People then get together and the community centre and discuss what's going on in their lives. No, we let the fucking big brother government tell us where to go and that's all a pre-planned agenda that we didn't talk about. So, no wonder we're all miserable as sin because we're all trying to live lives that are natural, right? That's out of the window, the new, right? Look, there she is, the new. <laughs> Ah, you see, that's how you get her to disappear. Ah, there she is. That's the one I'm talking about. Her there. <laughs> okay, because she was just in the shower. She was in the shower right now, weren't you? And I had to get the chair for her. And get her fucking hot water on. So she could wash herself. <laughs> now she's listening, okay, I'm under a bit of pressure. See, see that laughter that we just shared there? That's the first bit of laughter that I've had in the past week because I'm in a phase right now it's like I'm letting our kids subconsciously but I want nothing to do no actually consciously it's like one of those repressed anger things that you get Ken it's the only thing worse than actual real anger actual shouting at somebody and telling them how you feel is that repressed anger where you just fucking let them care to just your disdain towards them and the lack of communication it's like do you understand how fucking annoyed you make me? Do you, do you, do, just by saying nothing. And uh, I think that's what evil at the end of the day, you can. But, I don't know, I can't I'm doing that. I can't I'm being an arsehole to the ultimate level, you know. But, that's what we do in life, isn't it? So I'm just here to share these things with you, to make sure you know alone in your deep dark thoughts that you have about your partner. They do it one day, some woman will come on here and say I'm a complete fucking prick and I need to be put down. And you can know what? I would actually agree with them quite a lot of the time. Because I'm sick of life, I'm sick of living. It's all got zero point to it. 
people annoy me, I annoy myself. Maybe I shouldn't have four beers before coming on here. Okay, it's all getting a bit too real tonight, is it not? It's like John Lennon's Plastic Ono Band album. It's all a bit too real. It's all a bit too raw, raw, aye. Okay, and where's the cheery knob? Where's the, where's the knob that's cheery? He's disappeared. Because I've... I'm starting to get a bit tense about this fucking... Weeks worth of comedy I've got to try and... Kid people on that I'm funny for a month, aye. And I've got... Because I don't get any time to work on my material here, because she's forever asking, can you do me a favour? That's only what she says to me. Hey, noob. I can in the next line. Can you do me a favour? Oh, fuck aye. What are you going to do for me for a change? What are you giving back to me? You're giving me fuck all. And yet you want me to keep doing you favour after favour after favour. Now she wants me to go and do her physical therapy exercises and they do. They have to do every night. Okay, she cooks for dinner. She thinks, oh, I cook your dinner every night. Aye, you cook for the fucking boy, right? I get the leftovers. And if you didn't cook for me, I'm not asking you to cook for me. It's there, I eat it, right? If you didn't cook for me, I'll eat a cheese toasty, right? I can live off cheese and onion and tomato toasties. Nay bother. That's why I'm getting so fat. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough tonight. <sighs> What's life all about? It's about having a beer, folks. So cheers to you. Cheers, you can. I've actually cut down my drink the past wee while. Because one night, must have been about five years ago now, I, I used to drink quite a lot, I used to drink quite heavily. One night I, I was feeling no too, uh, no too good on a Friday night, so I stayed in one Friday night and I watched this programme called Ibiza Uncovered. Right, Ibiza Uncovered. And I watched it and there's all these fucking idiots in this program. I was like, who are these ballbacks? Okay. There was one guy in particular, this guy was unreal. He was staggering about everywhere, he's bumping into groups of women, he's been sick in the street. Okay. And it's like, ah. Then I kind of had a double look. I realised it was me. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even remember going to Ibiza. Then I got my passport and okay. I looked at it, I was like, Ibiza, June 97. Ibiza, June 98. Ibiza, June 99. <laughs> I guess it opens a drawer, puts this bit of paper. I discovered I'd bought fucking timeshare there. <laughs> so I thought to myself, you can I think I'm drinking a bit too much. So I kind of caught can canny for a while. That was the reason why I got married, because I was pissed at my fucking skull. I sobered up about six years after that and says, what the fuck have I done? And uh, my kidneys were screaming at me every night to stop drinking, so that's why I stopped. But now the harsh reality of having a kid and being married to somebody you fucking hate is sinking in. I don't care what to do about it. If you've got any answers, send them on an email to knob at knobstuart.com. Title, I'll suck your booby for free. <laughs> Alright, anyway, cheers to you and thanks for listening. Bye bye.